You know how when you were in <coughs> kindergarten and you used to be really proud of the Play-Doh worms you made and you're like, I'm really good at this. But then as you get older, you're like, that's not gonna be practical in my life. No, no, this is my job now. In today's video, we're going to test cooking several types of food in a vacuum. Hey guys, there's only one week left of our winter merch sale. If you haven't ordered your gear yet, go ahead down to the description and order it today. Not too long ago, we made a candy foot. And during that process, we tried something out just to see if it would make any difference. We put the lid of our vacuum chamber over the pot while it had candy melting and boiling in it. It almost ended in disaster. It, there was a lot of candy in the pot, and with the low pressure of the vacuum, it, it expanded a lot. Those bubbles grew, and it came really close to just covering the top of this, so we weren't able to pull a full vacuum. I'm pretty sure we only took it down to like five, maybe ten yeah, inches of mercury. It, it was boiling, well, it was bubbling so fast. A lot. So we didn't go very far with that, but we thought, hey, that's cool. We found a way to cook in a vacuum. We just make our cooking receptacle into the vacuum chamber, and so that's what we want to try today. Here's the basic idea. We're going to make a custom rubber seal for some pots and then suck all the air out of them while they're on the stove cooking food. We've got several different things to try and we're gonna see what the result is if we cook them while they are in zero pressure. So we're gonna need to make some proto putty rims and proto putty itself is not food safe, but it's only gonna be around the rim and it's not going to actually be in contact with the food. We wanna see what happens if you cook food with zero pressure. So we did our test just using the yellow ring that usually goes around our glass vacuum chamber and we managed to make it work, but yeah. it wasn't a great seal. So before we get started cooking, we want to make custom proto putty rings that will go on both of these two pots. So we've got a couple options to work with and that way we'll know we have a really good seal. And then what are we gonna cook here? We've got several things. We got lots of stuff. Uh, I'm excited to see if we can cook popcorn. That's popcorn. Fascinating. We've had people ask about cooking popcorn in a vacuum before. Now I have seen a little bit of popcorn cooked in a vacuum chamber before. I'm pretty sure Cody from Cody's lab and Action Lab. Action lab. I think both of them have tried this and they had interesting ways of doing it. One of them I think had a small hot plate inside a vacuum chamber and one of them I think used lasers. We're gonna try more direct, just we're gonna do even a side-by-side -side comparison. Same pot, same popcorn with a vacuum and without a vacuum to see if we get any difference. I think I remember Cody getting a result where the vacuum pop popcorn was a little bit bigger. So Interesting. I want to see if we can recreate that. You got some Jolly Ranchers so I we did. can retry the candy but without as many. We had like a hundred or so Jolly Ranchers, maybe yeah. more. Mm -hmm. I think five to yeah. ten at most. It's a very small handful. Not even going to cover the bottom of the pot. We've got eggs. We're just going to try, I think, a fried egg. Yeah, just cooking eggs. See what happens. And then we're also just going to try marshmallows because we know marshmallows expand in a vacuum. We're just going to see what happens if we start adding heat as they're expanded. We're going to try and make pancakes or pancake pour it in, pull the air out while it's cooking kind of thing. To me, the biggest concern is that Proto Putty can take a fair amount of heat, but if the pot gets too hot, it could maybe start to burn the Proto Putty and yep. we might lose a little bit of seal. So we'll see. hopefully it's gonna work out. Proto Putty, we've made this several times before on the channel. You use the silicone one and again, has to be silicone one. If Nothing says, else will work or cure. If it has a number two or like II, it won't work. It's not gonna be the same thing gotta be a silicone one. It's a little harder to find, like less of what's at your hardware store is going to be silicone one, but they almost certainly do have it. It's probably just a smaller selection of it. I think our Proto Putty seals have been curing for long enough. They that haven't. was supposed to be black and ended up sort of a dark green because black food coloring. That's what the pigment coloring, is, yeah. Yeah, black food coloring is just a very, very concentrated other color, in this case, kind of green. So let's see if we can pry this off. There we go, seal broken. There we go, ah, I don't know what noise I just made. Just to make sure this is working though, I'm just gonna do a quick test. Climbing nice and quick. Not all the way, but getting very close to it, as far vacuumed as we're gonna get at our altitude. That's a good seal. That went quickly. Very happy with that. 
I want to use the same pot, mm -hmm. the same, like literally count out kernels so we have okay. the same amount so we can see the volume difference later. Turns out a quarter cup is almost exactly 300 kernels. I got a quarter cup, poured it out. I had 297 minus occasional no, broken ones. you had ones. 298. 98. She made a quarter cup, poured it out, counted. She had 297. So that's two data points showing that <laughs> a quarter cup is about 300 kernels at least with Orville Redenbacher Gourmet Popping Corn Original Brand. We then both added a few more, so we have 300 kernels. Exactly. exactly. So I'm not going to leave the vacuum on the whole time, but I am going to keep an eye on it and if it drops below about 26 inches of mercury here on the dial, then I'll turn it back on. And I do think that will start happening. Steam does come off of these kernels a little bit and that of course is going to expand, fill the vacuum chamber a little bit more. It's not even... It's very touchable. So yeah, yeah silicone, the, really good conductor, or really good insulator. You don't even want to touch near this. Yeah, no, all of the metal is hot, but like this is just fine. Just, <laughs> this is not a hugely significant difference. We're not looking at like, oh, twice as much or anything like that. But it is more. There is, yeah. It's definitely This is clearly fluffier. taking up more space. I don't know which one that came from, but the difference is not enormous. This is like maybe 10% more volume kind of thing. It's really, really close. Both actually worked out pretty yeah. well. We did not get a lot of duds. We had like... There's like two in this one, it looks like. Yeah, one or two, and then this one had a couple that were not quite popped, they're like the half. This, this also does look like there were more pops because I can see more individual kernels, five or six, and there's only two over here. I definitely cannot tell the difference between this one and this one by eating it. Tastes just the same to me. Yep. If you were making popcorn on an industrial scale, it's possible that like you could save some money by like, oh look, it's a full bag. But would you less, but would you waste money yeah, the because cost you have a vacuum running the whole time? vacuum pumping. <laughs> your popping area, probably not worth it. Popcorn's cheap. I have pancake batter ready to go. Well, let's do pancake batter. Pancake batter. So you'll pour that on and then I'll just immediately get the lid down onto it and start pulling out the air. Now we won't be able to flip this. Nope. So I'm gonna do probably a small amount, but it's just gonna be one. Let's see what happens. And I have the heat fairly low. And it's expanding Yay! and I still left the tape in there. Oh, and it's boiling, and steam. Oh, the steam, I think, is coming out faster than the vacuum can yep, pull. Yeah, vacuum is barely holding. It's a race. We're just going to have to wait. We're going to end up having, like, the driest pancake ever because we pulled all the moisture okay. and boiled it out. We're making a pancake cracker. You ready for this? Kind of. Wow. Is it like eating a cookie? No, but, like, you can definitely taste, like, some of the sugar went crispy, I think. And it's, like, a clear flavor. Yeah, it's caramelized. This is a pancake. I would like my pancake extra crunchy, please. It really is like half cake, half cookie. So, cooked in a vacuum. Not really a pancake. But delicious. It's good. Yeah. It's strange. This is just like what happens to a pancake with no water in it. <sighs> Let's Weird. try something else. Okay, what's next? An egg. All right. Now, unfortunately, the bottom of this pan does have a slight <laughs> dome to it. It's not much, but it is there. So hopefully the egg will stay kind of in the middle, but I suspect it might end up sliding a bit. All right, now hopefully our vacuum is still gonna work now that it has a lot of water in that oil. Yeah. That pulled in a lot of steam, but here goes. Oh, there's more steam. Eggs have steam. It's bubbling a lot. I haven't seen the egg yolk expand before. It's it round, to, it's got bubbles in it. Do you see that? There yeah. are bubbles in the egg yolk. It had to get all the other water out before it could <laughs> drop down to low enough pressure that the yolk started to expand. The steam itself. Oh, oh. and it popped. We have popped it. It's <laughs> no longer a sunny side up because our yolk has failed. All right, that's been in there for way, way longer than any egg should be. We're just gonna open it, and uh, Callie says she wants to see if it splatters, so I'm just gonna open the valve all the way at once. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. It, uh, maybe that was too fast? <laughs> Is there any egg left? Tastes like egg, it's just not a good texture. It's like between, between slimy and crunchy. Like it has both. No. 
No. All right, so this one I'm gonna vacuum, get it to a vacuum, and then put it on the heat. Okay. If you have a convection oven at home, what that's doing is it has a fan in the back when you turn the oven on, and that's circulating the air. Now that helps getting a nice, even cook. What we're doing is basically the opposite. We are making it so that there is no ambient temperature, it's just on the bottom. So it's having weird results, but it's kind of cool to see. All right, this is uh, burning quite a bit yeah. now. Yeah, what? What is interesting though is look how liquid that texture looks. My goodness. I've never seen quite oh, that. Oh, I think it is smoke. Oh, but there was no smoke until it hit oxygen, huh? Yeah, there was no smoking, like very, very little vapor. Also, everything is melted now. So as soon as you took it off, it just Once there boomed. was pressure, it all melted. All right, so it was just the fact that there was zero pressure that was keeping it Yeah, cohesive. all right, I wanna try again, but this time melt it and then do the vacuum like what you were saying. Okay, see if we can get it to bubble up. Yeah, all right, new Jolly Ranchers new pot and we're not going to add any vacuum we're not going to pull out the air until after they are melted and just starting to bubble and here we go it's going crazy oh my gosh that's look cool. at all the bubbles i'm also really excited to see again if we can do that slower how fast everything just burns Okay, okay, that stayed together actually this time. And there's some steam or smoke, can't really tell. Nate, what you doing? Eating a spoon lollipop. <laughs> Vacuuming marshmallows, no heat being added, just vacuum. Oh yay, I'm thrilled. So here's my prediction. I think they're gonna do a lot the same thing as the Jolly Ranchers, the bottoms of them. I think it's going to melt yep. and then burn and the rest of the marshmallow is going to be like not affected yet. So we're just going to have a regular marshmallow with like bubbling burning black sugar down at the bottom. Oh, that one's starting to tip a little bit. This is way past marshmallow safety standards. So looking at this angle I can <coughs> see some very tiny bubble burning bits. All right, let's just open. I'm going to do it fairly low. All right, go for it. Oh, oh, and they no. shrink for all the pressure back in. Goodbye, small tiny marshmallow. <laughs> and and now we smell the burning. That's only like toasted, what? it's not black. Mm. Wasn't that too hot to touch? Oh, the insides are liquid. Gooey inside. Like, like water, but like. not like. Dripping. It's not burning me. Guys, we have two pots that we can now use as vacuum chambers to cook things in. What else do you want to see? <laughs> wide world of cooking weird things in a vacuum out there. We're looking forward to it. Tell us what you want. Guys, thanks for watching. Click it there to check out our last video. We'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.